This is a part two lesson uh, of uh, the different complexity issues in linear programming so, uh, model, which is no optimal solution cases. Therefore, uh, this is a completed LDPM model. This is maximized is equal to 3x1 plus 2x2 with the sub subject to the constraint x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1, x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 3. And with this non-negativity constraint x1 and x2 greater than or equal to 0, uh, then to solve uh, graphically, you can write the completed LDPM model that is maximized z is equal to x1 plus x2 subject to the constraint is this x1 and x2 less than or equal to 1. Uh, you can take this um, the completed LDPM here in the first step. And the second step is graphing the constraint. Therefore, uh, to graph the constraint, you can bring the first constraint that is x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 1, and you can change this inequality to equality that is by letting uh, x1 plus x2, which is, is equal to 1, and uh, you can uh, set x1 is equal to 0, then x2 will become 1, and uh, when x2 is uh, 0, x1 will become 1. Therefore, the coordinate of this the first constraint is. Uh, uh, 0 and 1 and uh, 1 and 0. And uh, when we take this is the uh, first constraint, the second constraint, which is, is equal to x1 plus x2, which is less, greater than or equal to 3, and uh, you can uh, set this inequality into equality, and uh, let uh, x1 is equal to 0, uh, you can find the value of x2, which is equal to 3, and uh, when x2 is equal to 0, and then x1 is equal to 3, then the coordinate of this the variables x1 and x2, which is 0 and 3, and 3 and 0. Then now we can graph the constraint. Therefore, this is uh, this line is the x1, representing x1, whereas this line is representing x2. Now, uh, taking the values of x1, which is here, is 3, and x2 is uh, three also, and the second constraint is both the values x1 and x2 are one and one. Therefore, uh, the first constraint is uh, which is greater than or equal to zero. Therefore, this is the common region uh, considering this the first constraint, whereas the second constraint is less than or equal to one. Therefore, this is the common area. Uh, therefore, there is no uh, common region between these two constraints. Therefore, there is no optimal solution we can say from this graph. The third complexity issue which we can find in linear programming model is which is unbounded solution. Therefore, uh, taking this example that this is maximized, z is equal to 3x1 plus 5x2, subject to the constraint, these are the three constraints, with given the negativity constraint here. And uh, now we can write the completed LDPM model the first, in the first step. Now we can take this uh, model to here. And uh, in the second step, uh, we can graph the constraint. And the first constraint is 2x1 plus x2 greater than or equal to 7. Now we can change this, uh, the first constraint, into an, uh, an inequality. Therefore, we can set 2x1 plus x2, which is equal to 7. And uh, let x1 0, we can find the value of x2, which is clearly uh, 7. And when x2 is 0 here, uh, you can find uh, the value of x1, which is equal to 3.5. Therefore, the coordinates are here. In the second constraint, that is x1 plus x2, which is greater than 6, uh, you can change this first to an equality. Constraint, then you can put the value of when x1 is equal to 0, you can find the value of x2 clearly, which is 6. And when x2 is equal to 0, you can find clearly the value of x1 to be 6. And uh, when you uh, take the, the third constraint, that is x1 plus 3x2, which is greater than or equal to 9, now you can change this value to an equation, which is x1 plus 3x2, which is, is equal to 9. Then let x1 is equal to 0. You can find the value of x2 is 3. 
when let x to is equal to zero you can find clearly the value of x one will be nine therefore these are the coordinates of the third constraint that is x one plus x two which is greater than or equal to now now we can graph each constraint now this is the horizontal line which is uh, showing the value of x2 and uh, which the vertical line which is the value of x2 you can put also this is the values which will re which will re uh, re representing the values of each coordinate of uh, the constraint now the first constraint which is uh, the value is x1 is 9 and uh, the whereas the x2 value is 3 now you can draw a straight line to connect these two uh, points and uh, the other constraint is when the x1 value is 6 uh, the value of x2 clearly becomes 6 now we can draw a straight line to connect these two points which is a third constraint the other constraint is when the value of um, x2 is 7 and also uh, the value of x1 is uh, 3.5 which is in between 3 and 4 this is 3.5 and you can draw a straight line connecting these two points uh, of the values 7 and 3.5 which is in in uh, in x1 and x2 values therefore the objective function as you can see from this completed LDP M memorial which is maximization which is uh, uh, now we can graph the find the common region therefore uh, uh, which is showing the greater than values therefore this is a feasible region which is not bounded therefore Always, what you should bear in your mind uh, in regard with regard to the this the graphical solution is a feasible region. Therefore, there is no here as you can see, there is no bounded area. Therefore, for this equation, there is uh, there are what infinite feasible solutions due to uh, the absence of uh, region. Therefore, there are infinite uh, solution for this equation. And uh, to find the common region, you can see, you can take also the, their coordinates, and, and also you can find the maximum values are this, are the maximum values, 35, 28, 29, and 27. Therefore, uh, uh, therefore, what you should make here, uh, not to make a uh, a mistake here is that you cannot take uh, this the value 35 because which is a value which is greater than the other for value which is representing the objective function therefore uh, as we can see from this graph there is the invisible region is uh, which is not unbounded therefore any point here also here here also in the feasible region there are infinite positions that will make this objective function will to be true. Therefore, one can deduce or one can make uh, 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 summarization here is that the uh, solution is infinite. The, other, the last one in this chapter two is a simple X algorithm or the graphic, the other uh, method that we will find the solution set, which is an iterative or a, conti a continuous algebraic process. One can move automatically from one uh, feasible solution to another, improving each situation until an optimal solution is reached. Therefore, this is a simple X algorithm. This is a simple mathematical model is formulated by this uh, US Department of Air Force in the year 1949 after the second after the end of the this uh, second world war therefore it is an iterative uh, process therefore to find a solution set through uh, a simplex algorithm method 
uh, first you can uh, represent a surplus resources that the business enterprise will use therefore in near, uh, real life uh, situations or uh, now in in our, in our living area it is unlikely that all resources will be used completely so there are usually unused resources that unused resources we can represent as slack variables which is unused resources that is left for the business enterprises so as to produce the or so as to meet the, the target and uh, these are the basic and the non-basic variables here basic variables are uh, selected arbitrarily with the restrictions that there be as many basic variables as there are equations the remaining variables are non-basic variables therefore this is the first constraint therefore in the first constraint you can put the um, unused resource which is s1 and uh, in the second uh, constraint you can put also s2 because here there is no s1 because which is s1 is representing the unused resource which is utilized by business enterprises in order to meet the stated objective uh, considering only the first constraint this is also representing also the second unused resource which is representing the second constraint then to find a, a basic solution uh, use the following steps to solve this programming model through the simplex algorithm the first step is to find slack variables to each constraint and uh, adding this uh, slack variable to each equations just like here we add s1 for the first constraint s2 for the second constraint which is representing the unused resource in the two constraints then the second step is create the initial tableau therefore the initial tableau you can see here is uh, the first initial the initial tableau which is the first column which is related with the basic variables and uh, the first row should include all the variables with the solutions here and also the coefficients you can put here in the body section and this is the solution area or this is the area that you will find the final value of this uh, linear programming model considering this simplex tableau therefore the second step here the second step here in uh, uh, linear programming model to find a solution set through the simplex algorithm is to create the initial simplex table. Then the third step is uh, select the pivot column. Here, the pivot uh, column, here is uh, uh, therefore, uh, this is the third uh, is the pivot column. This is the most. Uh, the column with the most negative value element in the last row and the third step is select the pivot row or the row with the smallest non-negative result when the last element in the row is divided by the corresponding element in the pivot column and also this is the first step five six and seven you can see or you can read and understand and now we can uh, go to the our uh, actual calculation of the simplex algorithm therefore read this uh, case that the company 3f furniture companies produces tables and chairs each table takes four hours of labor from the carpentry department and two hours of labor from the finishing department each chair requires three hours of carpentry and one hour of finishing therefore during the week the current week there are 240 hours of carpentry time are available and 100 hours of finishing time therefore each table produces gives a profit of dollar 70 and each, each chair a profit of dollar 50 how many chairs and table should be produced this is the case therefore now we can construct the first initial table which is describing in the first column the resource available there are two resources the carpentry and the finishing time with the unit profit and in the first 
a row of the table, you can put the variable that is represented by x1, which is tables, and uh, x2 by chairs, this is a constraint, 240 and 100. Then the objective function, which is p is equal to 70x1 plus 50x2. And the first constraint, which is carpentry, and the second constraint, which is finishing time. And therefore, the carpentry constraint, which is uh, is equal to 4x1 plus 3x2, which is less than or equal to 40. And the second constraint, which is a finishing time, 2x1 plus x2, which is less than or equal to 100. Then, then the negativity constraint here is. Therefore, uh, to, uh, first we can change this uh, inequalities to equalities by adding each slack of variables in each constraint. And also, uh, for example, in the first uh, constraint, uh, the value of uh, S, uh, the second uh, constraint, which is is equal to zero and uh, in the second constraint also the value of uh, s1 is zero therefore these are the unused hours uh, uh, or changing the equations to a simple x algorithm result then this is the objective function that is p is equal to 70x1 plus 50x2 plus 0x1 plus 0x2 this is unused resources and uh, now we can change this equations to an equality equations therefore by bringing this the right hand side values to left hand side that is they will all assume a negative value then which is this is in the last equations and uh, the first, when we, took, when we took the first equations also, this is 4x1 plus 3x2, which is s plus s1 plus 0 s2, which is equal to 400, 200, no, 240. And the second equation here, well, it will be, become 100. Then uh, bringing this uh, issue in a matrix format now, there are two uh, unused resources, which is slack variables here. And uh, there are also in the uh, uh, row section that is x1 and x2, s1 and s2, and also the profit hand side, right hand side values. Then these are the coefficients of each one is parentheses with their right hand side or the unused resources. Now this area will look like the um, diagonal matrix, all assuming all the diagonal values are assuming one and the remaining values are zero. And now we can change, or no, we can find, uh, now at this initial point, uh, the X1, which is represented by table, which is zero, there is no any produced chair, and also X2, which is represented by chair, therefore there is no any chair which is produced in the first uh, production area of the company. Now there is no, uh, but there is unused resource 240 available and also 100 uh, is also available here and the profit is in the first initial stages will become zero. Plus that, and then there are uh, in the next step three, now we can, uh, uh, we can find the pivot column, the pivot column, which is the most non-negative value from each uh, last row value, therefore, as you can see from these values, the most non negative value is clearly negative 70. Therefore, this uh, Coleman shows the pivot Coleman, and then uh, we can find uh, uh, also uh, the pivot row here. Also, uh, here, as you can see from the right hand side value. There are two unused resources, S1 and S2, that is 240 and 100. Then uh, from these two values, the uh, list value is 100. Here also negative, uh, this is the pivot column. As you can see, here is the pivot row, therefore, which is the list value. Then you can, uh, we can find also the pivot number, which is the intersection point of the pivot row and the pivot column, this is the value 2, which is obtained the 
through the intersection points of the pivot called my name is the pivot row. Now we can change first this is the pivot number into one. Therefore, to change this the pivot uh, number to one, you can divide this row by the value two to obtain or to change this value into one. Then now dividing row two by two, now you can find the pivot number is changed to one. This will become 1 over 2, this is 0, 1 over 2, 0, this 100 divided by 2, which will become 50. Now, the company is utilizing uh, the first, uh, the second uh, unused resource to produce this 50 chairs, uh, not tables, that is x1 is representing the table value. And uh, in the second operations, uh, now here we can uh, already this uh, pivot number is changed to one. Now it is obligatory to change this uh, S1 value, this uh, number four to zero, and uh, this negative seventy to zero, uh, which is the rule of the matrix uh, operation. Therefore, uh, to change this into zero, you can multiply the second row by negative four and uh, plus uh, row one this will change to zero therefore now we can check also this uh, issue uh, negative four times one which will become negative four plus four which will become zero therefore you can undertake four on this value and finally you can obtain this value in the first row of our operation and uh, in the second row of up, uh, in the second, uh, this to change this negative 70 to zero, now you can multiply the row two by 70 plus row three. Therefore, 70 times one, 70. Therefore, my, uh, minus 70, which will become zero. Therefore, go to the others uh, variables similar operations to and you can find the value 3500 value and then for t unused resource which is in the first constraint and the 50 table uh, not tables are now produced with the intention of getting profit of 3500 now then it is not now it is uh, here in this stage also it is not the solution is not now, still now, not optimal. Why? Because the, in the last row, you can find also negative values, that is negative 15. Therefore, now our intention is uh, to go uh, to the next step, that is uh, finding, taking this in the last row, uh, the only left negative value is negative 15. Uh, now this row, the second row will be, uh, the second column will become our new pivot column, and uh, this is the uh, entering variable. That is, the company is going to produce uh, chairs, which is represented by x2. Then uh, now, uh, and also the to find the pivot row, uh, we can. Uh, uh, here also you can divide these values by the uh, p, uh, pivot column values therefore 40 divided by 1 which will become 40 50 divided by this uh, 1 over 2 it will become 100 now this is the, the new pivot row whereas this is the new pivot column Therefore, the intersection points of this new pivot row and new pivot column now already by default it is already one. Now the next step is uh, the pivot number is already one, as you can see. Therefore, uh, it is obligatory to change this. Uh, the other value is one over two and uh, negative fifteen to zeros uh, as per the rule of the matrix rule. Now, um, to change this value, 1 over 2 to 0, you can use this row operation, that is, uh, 
multiplying the second row by one over two and multiplying by row one plus row two. Now uh, the value will become zero. And in the third row, multiplying the first row by 15 and adding that value in the row three, now the value will become zero. You can understand also for the other row areas too. And finally, the table will be changed uh, into, uh, uh, finally, the table is now optimal because there is no any negative value in the last row. Therefore, now there is an optimal solution is found. Therefore, the company is now is capable of, or now, uh, capable of producing that is x1 is equal to 30 x2 is equal to 40 now the company is going to sustain a profit of 4100 this is now an optimal solution it is found therefore this is the end of our uh, chapter two next time we will uh, Next time, we will uh, 